Hello again. When I heard that Rupert Murdoch's daughter, Elizabeth, was giving £3 million to promote racial diversity in the arts in Britain, my first thought was that this was quite unnecessary. There has not in recent years been any shortage at all of black artists with sharp elbows and an eye to the main chance who are able to get on very nicely in the world of modern art. Take Chris Afili, for instance. He's done very well indeed out of the sort of pretentious fools who seem to make up so much of the art world in Britain. For those who are not up on such matters, Afili has made a packet out of some pretty mediocre and substandard paintings which have a unique selling point in that they are smeared and bedaubed with faeces. Some are actually mounted on lumps of animal faeces. This isn't just any old faeces, mind. It's from elephants, which for a certain kind of white person gives it a pleasingly exotic touch. The thumbnail of this video is an example of Ophelia's work. It's a crude representation of the Virgin Mary, with bits of shit rubbed in it, and tastefully propped up on two lumps of elephant dung. I have an idea that if I began rubbing dog shit over bits of hardboard and anybody heard about it, then I would probably end up being sectioned or taken into care. But then I'm not a sharp young black guy eager to exploit gullible white folk and part them from their money. Why does Chris Afili use elephant shit so much in his paintings? Is it a cultural thing perhaps? Something to do with his roots? I rather doubt that. He was born in Manchester where he attended school. Then he studied art in London and spent a year as an exchange student in Berlin and then moved to Trinidad, where he now lives, largely, one suspects, on the proceeds of an audacious stunt which netted him over £700,000 of taxpayers' money. Now, I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure that elephants are not indigenous to either Manchester or Trinidad. This means that the only reason for using elephant dung was as a kind of headline-catching gimmick. Mind, I'm not criticising the guy. I mean, we all have to make a living as best we can, and if a load of middle-class liberals are prepared to pay good money for a picture drawn in elephant shit, well, who am I to complain? It's no worse than the many other white fraud to a part incredulous people with who have more money than cents from hundreds of thousands of pounds. It was after he was appointed a trustee of the Tate Gallery in 2002. This followed his winning the Turner Prize, of course, with one of his uh, paintings. After he became a trustee, Afili pulled off his most masterful coup. And I have to admit, I was left gaping in admiration at this. It confirmed a long-standing belief of mine that black people, as well as Indian and Chinese folk, are just as ready to line their pockets when a suitable opportunity presents itself, and that it's not just white people who are cynical, manipulative and avaricious. The Tate Gallery appointed Chris Afili as a trustee because it filled their diversity quota, of course. It looked great having a black artist amongst the trustees. During his four-year stint there, he discovered a racket which had been going on for some years, whereby trustees who were also artists could strong-arm the Tate Gallery into buying their paintings using public funds, which some people might regard as a little bit unethical, but there. I mean, the truth is the whole thing was unlawful, but it had been going on for a while when Chris Afidi was appointed, and I don't blame him at all for making hay while the sun shone. Unfortunately, the whole, the whole business has come to an end now. In 2005, he managed to flog them a dozen paintings mounted on little lumps of elephant shit. The price was £705,000 for the 12 paintings, which some of us might think is a little steep. 
but there, I mean, it doesn't really matter because the Tate is funded by the government in the form of the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. So it wasn't real money, it was only taxpayers' money. As everybody knows, taxpayers' money isn't real currency of the kind that we have in our pockets, but it's more like monopoly money. No wonder he moved to Trinidad after this neat piece of work. Some spoil sport blew the whistle on this, though, and the Charity Commission began poking their noses into the Tate's affairs and declared the whole business unlawful, which any ordinary person could have guessed would be the case anyway. It seemed that it had been going on for over 50 years, this particular scam, and the Charity Commission contented itself with asking the Tate not to do it anymore, and to say not to spend any more of our money in this way. In the description to this video, I give a link to a newspaper article about this fascinating incident. The reason I love this story is because it serves to debunk a particular kind of racism which one often sees in white liberals. They subscribe to a version of Rousseau's idea about black people being like noble savages who are free from European vices of meanness and cunning and cruelty. White people are the villains in every narrative, from colonialism to the transatlantic slave trade. Black people are always the mistreated innocents. I've always thought that attitude horribly patronising, and it's my belief that black people and Asians can be every bit as greedy and unscrupulous as any whites, given the opportunity. I rather think that if Murdoch's daughter does start chucking around £3 billion at the art world, then one or two such people will quickly find a way of getting their hands on the bulk of it and spiriting it away to the Africa or the Caribbean. 